Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson, and I am going to bring you breaking world news update, some from news sources, some from my intel sources. But before I do, I have some housekeeping items I want to talk about. First of all, I want to give a shout out to those of you who have given for crisis pregnancy. We, I'm putting a last check in there today. Praise God. I am so excited. For those who did give, if you message me, when I get the report, I'm happy to share that with you. That comes back what was given so only for those who gave I'm not making that you know public this is we're doing it as unto the Lord amen but some of the of you specifically said yeah I want to give to that and and I am writing a check today praise God a last check to go into that and I am so excited and just I just want to honor you guys with that um I want to thank all those who pray for one another, who encourage one another. This channel, I said, is dedic dedicated to Jesus Christ, to Yeshua HaMashiach. And while it is my face, it is a non-501c3. We are not a not-for-profit. This is just my channel as the Lord has led. I share it with the brothers and sisters. I could not do this alone. In fact, I'm very technologically challenged. I want to give a shout out to our brother who has joined and is helping us and doing a great job already answering questions, getting uh, left behind letters out. And brother, I am going to be calling you either today or tomorrow. I, I got your message. It was really busy, but I so appreciate you. And I'm going to need your help. Brothers and sisters, on Saturday, we have a lie. I do live prayer as the Lord leads. Yes, we have testimonies of people that have been healed from that live prayer. We give God all the glory. That's a work of Holy Spirit. We are bringing our supply and coming together and praying in the name of Jesus. And this Saturday, at the end of that prayer, we are going to have communion together. You bring your own communion, your elements, and I'll lead us in that, and we'll have communion together. Some of you had suggested that, and I think that's a great thing. So we will do that. Remind me, we'll try to do that every so often. I am being led to once a week do a live Bible study. And we're obviously we're going to do it on these end times, biblically based. I am going to, um, now I'm more of the evangelist, as, as you can tell, my preaching style. We all have our giftings. I can teach, and that's what this will be, more of a teaching. And so I want to have notes. So, brother, I'm going to be calling you because I need your help with that. I can, I can clearly get copies of my notes to you and then let you figure out how to dispense it to our brothers and sisters. Kathy and Sue, you're doing a great job with the prayer request and meeting needs, and I know that's growing. I praise God for you guys. The other four who do not want to be identified, thank you. Helping with women in crisis pregnancy. We're still trying to enhance that ministry, and as the Lord leads, I call it ministry, but this is, listen, this is all of us together, brothers and sisters, in these final moments of the end of days. But I'm really excited, the Holy Spirit leading to do this Bible study just once a week. Some of you have asked, hey, could you do prayer every day? Well, I can't. I have to allow Holy Spirit to lead, and there's only so much we can do uh, in a day time, but you can pray, and so... I do on my Facebook. I'm going to be more diligent on my Facebook uh, to post a scripture a day. So um, I'm going to commit to that starting next week. I it's I do it a lot, but I haven't been doing it. So on my Facebook, though, if you're offended by pictures of my family and particularly my grandchildren, you're not going to want to go on my Facebook. So it, my Facebook has become a place for scripture and, and I post my adorable grandchildren. And so if you're offended by that, you don't want to go there, but you can certainly follow there and I'll be posting a scripture and sometimes a prayer there. But the once a week prayer we're going to continue to do and the Bible study weekly, um, I feel led to do that with notes. I want to have notes. So I would recommend, I'm going to start next week. I'll let you know the day of that. I need to talk to our brother on here who's going to help me with the notes, meaning being able to disseminate. I'm going to let him pray. And do we send out the notes prior to or after and and I'll talk to him about that. But you might want to get a folder or a notebook with a folder because this is going to be I'm going to have uh, the phone charged because this is going to be a teaching and so we're going to go into it and um 
And again, I'll talk to my brother. Maybe there's a way that uh, we could have questions and answers. But again, I'm not, when I tell you I'm not techno savvy, I'm really not. But praise God, we have a brother. I also have a son, Matthew, who has, who has helped me, and a daughter in love, Jessica, who, who real time here has helped me. And without them, this channel wouldn't even exist. So I give all the glory to God, though. Praise God. So I want to share that. I also wanted to say um, how much I am blessed by some of your posts. Like I looked at uh, Eyes Open. I looked at your thing on the pets today. I was so blessed by that. Sister Gigi from Blue Heaven when my wife and I were driving between, uh, and those who saw the video yesterday, I wore my poor wife out. She is such a blessing. I do go fast, um, but that's, praise God, that's my personality. My little grandson, Peter, is exactly the same way. I mean, exactly the same way. I just, the child has one speed, and I just, I love them all. But I see he's got my eyes, and he's got that part of that, I call it the, he's, he's a little evangelist too. So praise God. Gigi, my wife was so blessed. We were driving and your, I like to listen to preaching <clears throat> from my local fellow pastors and, and others. And there are those that we're all drawn to. I love Brother Chad at Watchman on the Wall 88. Um, I'm so blessed by that young man and his spirit and what he brings. Gigi, it was such confirmation. Thank you so much, sister, for defending the truth and the faith. And like my wife said, she loved your spirit. She said, wow, she is just beautiful inside and out. But what you shared, the confirmation that you shared, I didn't know. I, I had brought the same thing that you had heard, and it was confirmation. Isn't that amazing how the Lord works? But we love you, and we're praying for you. Praise God, brothers and sisters, that in this season, Holy Spirit is, is confirming and, and speaking, and he speaks to many of you. That's why I have literally had people, other YouTubers who have said, oh, you should just, um, who have reached out to me and said, we followed your stuff. You should, what is it, discontinue, not allow, I don't know the technical terms, but the comments, and I know that that's, I wouldn't even know how to do that, but we have people that on the team that could do that, but I don't want to do that. So I appreciate when you guys, there have been some vile things, but we don't want to do, that's, you are all, this is like the fellowship that we have together that you can minister to one another, and you guys are are doing that, and I just appreciate and love you all so much. God loves you, and I, we, soon we're all going to be together, praise God. So, I want to bring you the news now. I went on a little bit on those things, but I'm really excited about what the Lord's doing until he comes. I, I want to say, no, I'm going to hold that till the end. Till the end. I'm going to write this down so I don't forget, because sometimes this news is so amazing what's going on. So, set, Israeli 7 News, I believe that's what it's called. <clears throat> First Prime Minister... Uh, Ben Gurion, David Ben Gurion, said something to the effect that to live in Israel, you have to believe in miracles. Well, yesterday, Arabs in Jerusalem threw a firebomb at a transport that had uh, Jewish people on that. And the vehicle completely burned up, and not one person, they were on their way to Shiloh, not one person was injured, not one person. And people are saying, this is a miracle. How did that happen? <laughs> it's a miracle. Brothers and sister, sisters, we are seeing, I, I think that's like a foreshadow of what's coming with Ezekiel's war. And you're going to see even in some of the news that I bring. Praise God for that miracle. Those people were protected. That's the hand of God. We praise God for that. Hallelujah. The, the, the bus, a complete, the transport vehicle, I should say, completely burned up. Not one person was injured. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, in my breaking intel, and then there are new sources, you can look them up, that are coming out, <clears throat> sharing things that prove this to be true. Pakistan have made 
immediate preparations for war with India. They are moving troops and equipment to the border. There are things like India not going to share the water and Pakistan saying they'll retaliate. You've seen the terrorist attack from Pakistan and India. This is all over disputed territory that I've been reporting for a couple months now that came from my intel sources, also in the media now. And <clears throat> China is tending to back Pakistan, and Pakistan is going after India, and war is going to break out. Now, intel sources say that that big war, it, they, they say it's going to be within the next several days. I don't know. I'm not declaring that that will happen. It could be long. Who knows? Who knows what could happen with it? But that's what sources are saying, that they believe it's going to happen in the next several days or a couple weeks. They're not saying absolute, so I don't want to, oh, you're liars. I don't want to hear that. They're bringing the best information they can, and I praise God for them. Much of it proves out. In fact, there's only been a couple times that it's been a variation on it out of all the reports, so praise God for that. He's, he's blessed us with that. Also, <clears throat> Iran open source hacked a U.S. drone in the Middle East. Now, yesterday I talked about how um, the Iron Dome system was hacked and somebody came back and said, yeah, that's old news. No, I'm talking about again. This is, so there have been hacks before. This is current, recent, in the past couple days. Iran open source hacked a U.S. drone in the Middle East. The U.S. anti-hack team could not stop the hack and they literally had to destroy it with hard self-destruction options. So they have their option. They had to destroy the drone. Now you know what will happen. They'll work on not allowing that to happen. These, I believe, are the foreshadow of what is being reported, that there is great, great risk and threat of a cyber attack, something like an EMP against the U.S., against U.K. Brothers and sisters, I keep saying that, I keep sharing it, it, according to my sources, it is going to happen, I just don't know where or when, and, and it could be, you know, a lot of the rapture visions and dreams like my wife has had and others of you have had, there's been some kind of, you sense some kind of devastation at that moment, like, in conjunction with the, the Harpazzo, praise God. Then in WND, in an Iranian TV, they have reported that they have missiles aimed at U.S. carriers in the Persian Gulf. Brothers and sisters, Iran and their proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, are ready to attack at any moment. In BulgarianMilitary.com, a military source says if there is conflict between Israel and Iran, it's going to be all-out battle. They're talking about how serious this could be. Well, there's already conflict. Think about it. The proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, do not stop. They're trying to bring those smart devices in. They have... I've read reports of so many missiles, tens of thousands, even over 100,000, that in Lebanon, that... Uh, Hezbollah has. They are out for the annihilation and destruction of Israel. We know this. We know this already. So it is clearly just a matter of time. This is breaking news from my intel sources. Now, you'll hear in the news that Russia is not backing Iran. That is such a lie. I've been preaching since 2015 about the alliance, the strong alliance with Russia and Iran. They share military. They share banking. They share infrastructure. Like, this alliance is not new, brothers and sisters. Well, Iran has just taken a delivery of 30 Russian-made SU-30 fighter jets. Now, remember, recently, my intel source told us before it came out in the news that $5 billion was was loaned to uh, Iran from Russia. Now it's out in the... That had come out in the media. They are arming up. They are arming themselves for war. It's here. It's, it's any moment. The stage is set. The stage is set. Now... The rapture. I, I wrote it down, praise God, because I was going to forget. This is what I want to end with. 
Yes, we can see the convergence and the signs. We have a stirring in our spirit. We know, and I, I say this with full confidence, the season we're in. When I hear, see the comments or hear people say, it could be another trillion years. It could be another hundred years. No, it can't. And I'll be accused of setting a date. I am not setting a date. I'm not saying, I've been accused of being Harold Camping. I think that was his name. I am not Harold Camping. I am not going out and saying on this day, around this time, the rapture is going to happen. I never will. I'll never do that. I don't know the day nor hour. But I am telling you, we are the generation. We are that fig tree generation. You can disagree with me and that's okay. You're still my brother and sister. One of us is going to be right and one is going to be wrong. I'm the one who's right. Praise God. I feel confident in that, but I still love you. I'm not going to beat you up over that and you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Not setting a date, but we do know the season and we are to know the season. Read the word of God. I've already shared those scriptures. People say, well, show me a scripture. I do. They don't come back with scripture. They misinterpret a scripture or try to they don't rightly divide it. They'll, they'll take scriptures that are meant about the second coming and try to make it about the first coming. And if you disagree with me, you don't have to come on here every time and make a comment the same thing over and over again. I believe in pre-tribulation rapture. Hello, there's no mystery there. So why are you coming on a channel that's committed to pre-tribulation rapture? If you say, well, I like your news updates, praise God, then listen to the news updates. When I start talking about the pre-tribulation rapture, Hop off. I'm not offended by that. I get it. You disagree with that. Then do your own channel. Go to a channel and support in that that believes in that. You have every right to do that. I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. I believe the word of God. We are not meant for wrath. And the bridegroom, I've shared about the idiom, he's coming to get us. Now, what I want to end this with is, while I 100% believe that the rapture is imminent, Everything that needed to happen has happened. Praise God, and I'm going to get myself really excited here. One thing that we should all agree on is that every one of us is in our generation of our rapture. What do I mean by that? It is appointed unto men once to die. Now, those of us who are caught up in the rapture, we know. But otherwise, should the Lord tarry, which we are we're in the final moments, but should the Lord tarry, even if you believe that the rapture is not pre-tribulation. Even if you believe that, even if you believe we could have a thousand years left, you're not going to have a thousand years left. You know that. Anybody watching this, you're not going to have a thousand years left. So, you must believe, right, because death is a part of life, that you will die and that even if you believe the rapture is at the end of the tribulation, you know at one point you're going to be raptured. But the point that I want to talk about is that the Bible says that life is like a vapor, a mist. It's here today, gone tomorrow. And anybody my age or older, you know, it's like a fleeting, it's like you blink. You know, when, when you're young, time doesn't seem to go so fast. But as you get older, you realize how quickly time is going. And we, we all, should the Lord tarry, we will face death and one day we'll have our rapture. And for just a second, I want you to be concerned about your rapture because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. We know that anything could happen at any moment, at any time. In the next 60 seconds, the estimate says 105 people will die and where will they spend the rest of eternity? Brothers and sisters, do you believe on Jesus? Do you believe on him? And what are you going to do between now, you know, once, think about it. Let's take the rapture out of it for just a second. From the day, my grandchildren, <laughs> my grandchildren, from the day they're born, they, every day, they're one day closer to death. I know that sounds morbid, but it's truth. But it's truth. Death, I'm not going to go into all that happened with the fall of man, if you don't know that, you should know that, study that. My point is, if you aren't guaranteed tomorrow, are you ready to meet the Lord? Do you believe that Jesus always was God? 
that he always existed. We believe in, according to the word of God, the eternally self-existent God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, was born of flesh, that he came in the flesh. We believe that he, he never sinned, and he did die on the cross, that he willingly did. That 2 Corinthians 5.21 applies, he who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. He died, he shed his precious blood to pay the debt, the ransom for our sins. He was buried, he conquered hell, death, and the grave. He took the keys, that's what the word of God says. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Jesus conquered. If you believe that, Romans 10, 9 and 10 applies. If you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that man believes and is justified, and it's with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. You need to get this. And I know some, I've gotten messages from people to say, well, you say that all the time. And I'm going to keep saying that. I'm going to keep saying that. We should all say that. We need to be hungry for God and bold in this season. Because truly, <laughs> truly, he's at the door. The, the shout, the trump is going to happen. The voice of the archangel. And we're, we're in that season, brothers and sisters. And even if not, you are not guaranteed your next breath. Today is your day of salvation. Do you believe on the Lord Jesus? We are not saved by doing more good than evil. We are not saved by doing good. We are not saved by believing Jesus was the Son of God and doing good works. We are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, lest anyone should boast. Yes, repentance is a part of that. Repentance is a change of mind. Repentance is I'm going to receive that free gift of salvation. I'm not going to trust in my own works, in my own ways, in the God of this world. I'm believing on Jesus. I believe, I believe. If you do not believe that he always existed, you're not saved. If you do not believe that he came in the flesh, you're not saved. If you do not believe that he was perfect, never sinned, you're not saved. If you don't believe that he shed his blood to pay the debt for your sin, you're not saved. If you don't believe that he rose from the dead, you're not saved. I'm not being harsh. I'm bringing you the truth. And if you don't know that truth, call out to God. Ask him to reveal it to you. If you seek him with all your heart, you're going to find him. Well, I wanted to bring that truth. We, we, we are excited about the rapture, but I want us to always remember, we're not guaranteed our next breath, brothers and sisters. We're not. And in the next 60 seconds, 105 people will breathe their last breath. So let's be about our Father's business. Well, I want to bless you today before I let you go. I've given you a lot this morning. I'm so excited about what God's doing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you and his shalom, his peace, nothing lacking, nothing missing, complete whole. The peace that passes all understanding be yours. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah, I pray and I bless you. Now go occupy and redeem the time and may the joy of the Lord be your strength in Jesus' name. Amen.